I am not recording. <laughs> you are, okay. So the, the message that I seem to be receiving at this difficult time is fix your eyes on Jesus. And that is a verse from Hebrews chapter 12. And it reminds me of when I travel by ferry to France. I get very seasick. So my best tack is to stand outside at the back of the boat with my eyes fixed on the horizon. I stay level and steady, eyes firmly fixed in one direction. And I think this is wise advice for these challenging times. So to quote Hebrews 12, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and we've just had the reading, Matthew 21, 1 to 11. This is one of the traditional readings for Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday is the start of Holy Week, when we reflect on and reenact the events of the last days of Jesus. The reading mentions large crowds accompanying Jesus, some going ahead some following, some spreading their cloaks and others laying palm branches on the road. Who were these crowds? And why were they gathering in Jerusalem? What was going on? Well, the people had gathered to celebrate the feast of Passover. John tells us that some days before the Passover, Jesus was the guest of honor at a dinner at Martha and Mary's house to celebrate Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It was at this dinner that Mary poured expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. A large crowd found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of Jesus, but they also wanted to see Lazarus. 20 years ago, I went on a missions trip to Nepal from Bible school. We visited a camp for refu refugees from Bhutan. The people who were deported from the country because they were of Nepali ancestry. Many were professional people, lawyers, doctors and the like. And they lived in huge camps in wooden huts with mud floors and newspaper to decorate the walls. It was real poverty. But we noticed that when we were invited into a house, we were followed by crowds of people. It was not unusual in that culture for people to congregate and to go into other people's homes. John 12.12 12 tells us that the day after the special dinner, a great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Now, how fickle are these crowds? One minute, Jesus is a celebrity, being hailed as a king. Later, he is a pariah, a figure of scorn and rejection, when they cry out for him to be crucified. Those in Jerusalem were asking the question, who is this? The answer they got was, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The people proclaimed Jesus as a prophet, but did they truly know who he was? If we were to ask, for example, the woman at the well, she, what would she say about Jesus? I think she might say, well, sir, I can see that you're a prophet. And then she went into the local town declaring, he told me everything I ever did. And if you spoke to the apostle Peter, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. At this time of upheaval and life-changing restrictions, how would we answer the question, who is this? Who is Jesus for us? Anyway, back to the story. 
Jesus borrowed a donkey and rode into Jerusalem amidst great uproar. People waving palm branches and laying their cloaks and branches on the road before him. Palm branches were a symbol of victory and triumph. It was common practice at the time to welcome a king by laying out a path of branches for him to ride on. It was their version of the red carpet. A Jesus was making an intentional and life-changing statement by his action. And why a donkey? Well, firstly, he was signifying that he was a king, but the choice of a donkey indicated what his intentions were. A king, wanting to demonstrate power and strength, rode valiantly on a horse. Riding a donkey signified that he came humbly and in peace, and that he was identifying with the common people. Secondly, he was fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, about the coming of the Messiah. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He was indicating that he was the Messiah. And thirdly, Jesus was aware that there was a plot to arrest and kill him, and that by openly and publicly going into Jerusalem, he would be laying down his life, that he was riding into suffering and death. Those around him didn't see or understand this, waving palm branches and chanting Psalm 118 as Jesus entered Jerusalem. They didn't understand what kind of a king Jesus was that he wasn't going to rule over an earthly kingdom. In the reading, Matthew tells us, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Some of the people were busy acclaiming Jesus as a king, praising God, <clears throat> while others were not happy. In Luke's account, chapter 19, he tells us, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, Rebuke your disciples. They objected to the noise of the crowd because they had their own agenda. In John's account, chapter 12, so the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And again in Luke's account, now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Jesus was a challenge and an inconvenience to the religious leaders. If the people followed him, the religious leaders would lose their control and they could not allow that. We who are followers of Jesus may face the same opposition, especially at this time. Many may question why God allows this virus. They say that if he's all powerful, why doesn't he stop it? We do not have the answers to all the questions which may be raised, but we have the example of Jesus, who in the face of opposition and rejection, turned his face toward Jerusalem and steadfastly followed the road to suffering and death because that was the path laid out before him. In these days of almost total social isolation, we could feel very much alone, but we are not alone. Jesus is with us. He lives within us by the Holy Spirit. It's wonderfully encouraging to have electronic platforms and social media to enable us to be in touch with each other. It's an incredible blessing and a lifeline for some. But Jesus is closer to us than we can imagine and is our very help in time of trouble. Our servant king, who rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, is the Lord of our lives when we surrender to him in that same humility. 
instead of palm branches and cloaks, let us lay down our lives for this glorious King and let him ride triumphant into our own hearts, that our lives would reflect his glorious humility, love and compassion in these difficult days. Shall we just pray? Father God, we thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. That in these difficult days you uphold us and you enfold us in your love. We bring to you our unanswerable questions, lay our lives before you and fix our eyes on Jesus, continuing to walk in the path laid out for us, trusting in your faithfulness and love. Amen. <laughs>